So in an effort to understand what this channel is and what I want to put on it, I have decided to start um, <clears throat> doing some Darktable and sort of Linux software videos. I did one a few weeks ago, or I guess a few months ago now, I don't know, time's strange now, uh, about uh, CMuse, which is a music player I use, but um, also a number of years ago, I made a series of videos on using Darktable um, for raw image processing on a second channel. Um, that channel, uh, both of my channels have like a few hundred subscribers. I decided instead of splitting the audience and, um, um, you know, each channel having less frequent updates, I'm just going to upload the content to one channel, let the chips fall where they may, let the one channel get more frequent updates. So um, I'll link or archive or put a screenshot or something of those uh, old, they're really outdated now, they're on a Mac. Um, that version of Darktable, none of that's really applicable to this version anymore. But if you want them for historical purposes, I'll try to remember to link them. But today I'm going to talk about um, digital asset management in Darktable, importing, and all of that stuff. Um, Darktable is kind of like Lightroom. Um, it's a raw image processor, um, metadata collector, uh, exporter, and all that stuff. Um, you can install it by going to darktable.org. Uh, this is the website here and clicking the install link and uh, choose your OS. If you're using a Linux distribution, chances are it's in your repository. Um, for Fedora it is here. They do have um, third-party packages, uh, the open build system, and this is what I use um, because it's a little bit more up-to-date. Um, so you can come here and get the latest release um, from the open uh, open build system from OpenSUSE here. If you're using a Windows system, you can download the latest installer here, and it's just an exe. Um, for the Mac here, there we go. Um, you can get the latest DMG and just drop it over into your applications folder like you would anything else. Um, it's <clears throat> pretty easy to do on those on those other operating systems. Linux is kind of its native land though so that's where it works the best i i can use it on either um i may do some of these videos on a windows machine or a mac and uh, just let you see i uh, kind of a, the workflow works on either one um i've blanked out my preferences and everything so this is a fresh empty slate so we can get started um but yeah all right first things first or second things second i don't know which order this comes in before we even touch dark table we need to have the files on a disc um, this is really up to you i have sort of this layout here i've got a few photos here that i want to use in this demo just because you know i backed up my original dark table files but you know i break up things um by year and event or if i have clients oops let me go back here to clients um um yeah, so I've got like my clients, projects, uh, you know, models I've worked with for different uh, different projects and stuff, or portfolio work, um, photos by year, so going back quite a while um, that I put in there, and I and I usually put them in by the month. So if we look at um, 2021 and we look at like 06, I've got um, all of these sort of just you know things that happened or things I was photographing in there, and then I dropped the photos in there. I highly recommend having your photos organized on disk like this and it doesn't matter if it's a NAS I have them locally on this RAID drive but I am moving towards a NAS based um, active uh, setup uh, instead of just using that as an archive um, but you definitely want to get these organized on disk. Darktable is not great at organizing just like Lightroom it's just more of a viewer um, it's not like a uh, uh, you know it's not like Aperture was or iPhoto whatever they're calling that now um, it's more of a, uh, of, a edit of a raw processor. It can do some basic stuff, but you want to have a layout that makes sense on your file system. Um, uh, Darktable does have something called um, uh, local copies, which will allow you to uh, um, make like a local copy to your hard disk. So if you have this on a NAS or something, you can make a local copy to your SSD in your machine and uh, you should have an SSD now, <laughs> I hope, and and use it there uh, and make edits and then put it back on the NAS within Darktable. So uh, I might show that in a future video, but for now we're just gonna go over the basics. 
Okay, so now that you've got your um, photos on a disk in a manageable hierarchy, uh, you've got Darktable installed, now you want to get some photos into it. But first, we need to change a few settings. So, or I like to anyway. Um, you notice up here in the right hand corner underneath the Light Table module, um, and light, dark table is organized sort of like Lightroom where it's got different modules, Darkroom, um, and several other ones too. Uh, we're just going to focus on the light table right now. Um, you want to click this gear icon, and I like to change a few things in here. Um, this is pretty similar to my last series of videos. I haven't changed much to here over the years. The By default, it drops you into the preferences for the module you're in. I'm going to change to import because that's where I want to change things. Um, well, let me go to general first. Uh, I like to change the theme to dark table icons. I'm going to leave it on dark table just because I think that's the most applicable. And if you want to use dark table in a different language, that's where you would change that too. Um, although it does a pretty good job of picking up the language on your machine, um, a little too good sometimes. So uh, I have a Japanese IME installed on my uh, MacBook that I have. I have like an old Mac still laying around and uh, it picked up and said in Japanese one time. So um, I want to change a few things in import. First thing, recursive, recursive directory traversal will import, importing film rolls. This will um, set it to where it will go down inside of directories. Uh, so say you have like a directory called beach trip and then you have day one, day two, day three folders underneath that beach trip folder. This will go and, and pick up those. So otherwise it would just stop at that top beach trip folder. Uh, creative to be imported, creator to be applied when importing. You could just put your name here. Uh, publisher, I put my website here if you have a different publisher or something, some kind of commercial entity publishing your stuff, that's where you would put it. Rights to be applied while importing. I actually set that on import and I'll show you how I do that. Comma, uh, comma separated tags to be applied while importing. I put my website here. You can also put your YouTube tag, your um, Instagram tag, whatever you have here, your your Odyssey tag, your Odyssey username here um, as a tag. And when this stuff gets exported, this metadata will follow it. Some social media sites strip the metadata. Bad. Uh, others don't, but at any rate, um, the other thing I change, the big thing I change is this initial import rating. Uh, I'm a binary kind of a person. I usually keep your shots that I really like and want to edit. I'll give them five stars. Um, everything else gets zero. So initially, I just set everything to zero. Um, I don't really use anything in between there. I either like it or I don't. One or zero. The only other thing I would check is to make sure that if you have an OpenGL, or I mean, excuse me, an OpenCL uh, capable graphics card, I have a Vega 56 in here. Um, that you come in here and make sure that's enabled. Um, the default scheduling is fine. If you have like a latest generation uh, graphics processor, the very fast GPU may be better. Um, I don't really notice any difference on mine between the two. So, and a Vega 56 is old now, but not that old. So, um, I don't know, maybe with the new 3000 series or the RX 6000 series, uh, there might be some difference there. So, that's that in a nutshell. Um, now that we have that set, we're going to go up here and you'll notice this little thing here. It says import. Um, I had it drop down there, but um, usually it's up in this. When you first open it, it's up in this sort of um, up state, collapse state. And click on that and click. Uh, you can import a single image or a folder. I want to import a folder and by default on Linux anyway, it drops you out into a your home folders. I'm going to go find that pictures, photos, uh, dark table demo and drop down this import options box here and <clears throat> check this box to say apply metadata on import. And this is where it gets all your tags from that you just set in, in the preferences, but this is where you can set your rights. And I usually just like to do creative commons uh, by in CSA and and apply that to all of my photos and uh, yeah uh, that's where you do that and it'll save that for each time and we'll just click open now now I only had four photos so it imported like that if you've got hundreds of photos or thousands of photos it'll take it a minute to think about it uh, I just stuck four in there to, to work with so now you we've got some photos in here to work with now you can actually swap to the to the, to the darkroom module. I'm not going to do that quite yet because we aren't going to go there. But on the left hand column here, you can kind of go through and and 
and see you've got the image information so this is if you click something it's going to give you all of the uh, you know the camera that was used all the metadata with it um, it's your recently used collections I use I like to leave it in folders um, and just to show my folder hierarchy there you can also do some add another rule narrow down this search so you can search by any kind of metadata times date taken um, so uh, some of these folders let's just see the, the files that were taken in 2016 2017 2019 um, and you can uh, clear this rule and it'll take it away and it'll show all your files again. So it's pretty, it's got some pretty powerful um, uh, uh, capabilities for searching and organizing. So, uh, you know, if you just want to see something that was just taken with, you know, the X100, uh, the D800, there you go. Um, you know, so you can search by basically any kind of attribute you want. Um, We'll clear this rule and just go back to folders and 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 stuff and that's helpful in a large collection of photos we're only working with four in this demo because that's you know just i just wanted to work with some small group of photos to to show you here um <clears throat> you've got the star ratings if you hover your mouse over the photos it'll give you like some brief metadata the date the time the aperture the lens the length all that stuff um you've got some color ratings and usually after I get a photo edited, if it's something I'm on to deliver, I give it a red rating. Um, like if I'm working with a client or something, um, you know, five is five stars is something I like. So if I like this photo here, I'll go and I'll hit five on my keyboard. Um, the number five, I'm hitting that now. Or you can change that by hitting any anything on the number uh, row here. So four, three, zero, set it back to zero. So I'm gonna hit five. So I, you know, go through that and say I like it. Um, you can also apply a color rating, so we'll, we'll make this this guy green, right? So, you know, he gets a little color dot here that shows the green rating. You can clear that by coming down here and you've got this clear label, uh, this clear color label thing. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. You can change the zoom factor by scrolling this back and forth here. You can just make the thumbnails bigger or smaller. Um, I'll leave it at like two so it fills up the screen better. Um, and now, you know, we can go back through and give that a green rating again. You can see it applied there, clear it. So some basic stuff on the right hand side, there's things for, um, you can select all your photos, you can select none, that sort of stuff. You can select untouched and that's kind of nice. Um, so if you have like a, a job that you're doing and you just want to keep the edited photos you can select the untouched and it'll and you can dark table knows which ones you haven't edited yet and you can then move those to somewhere else um, uh, selected images so you can do things create HDR copy locally and that's what I was talking about before I think with the if you have it stored on a NAS or an external drive you can copy it locally and it'll copy it to your internal drive um, Here's the metadata edit editors, so you can add like a title and description before you export it and stuff like that. Tagging, geotagging, export selected. Um, you can export to different formats and places, and we'll get to that too later, but I just wanted to give you a, kind of a brief overview of that. History stack, um, this is an important one. I use this one quite a bit. Um, you can uh, copy, so let's say you've got a roll of photos from a shoot and you they all have basically the same look and you want to apply that to multiple photos, you can copy that history, you can get one edited and then copy that history stack and then just shoot it out over a bunch of photos. You can discard history. Um, by default, Darktable um, writes to sidecars. In fact, now if we go back and look in that directory, I think um, you can see the um, dark table demo we'll kind of go in there and you can see it writes XMP files so that that is handy um, so if you just back those up you can kind of keep those um, I did have to look up how to zoom in GNOME because I did not know how to do that because I'm a long time KDE user anyway um, <clears throat> that's that's neither here nor there um, but we have so so um, you know if you want to back up your edits you just take that XMP sidecar for it, file with you and that's all there's no it's not like Lightroom where there's a huge library file that if you lose your library file it kind of goes the whole thing kind of goes boom um, so that's nice um, but this is the light table um, uh, module in a nutshell so 
Um, yeah, if you have any questions. Oh, one other thing. So you can view, um, so let's say you're editing these and you're like, oh, I don't really like that one. So you reject it, you can hit X. Um, that goes into culling mode, um, but we'll go into back into file manager, but you can, um, you can come through and hit uh, this red X here to exclude files. So if you say like, mm, I really don't like the way that one looks, you hit the red X and you can come through here and you can say, just show me the rejected and it'll show you just the files that you rejected. Um, you can show the ones that just have five stars, um, two stars, zero stars, unstarred only. Uh, and then all again. Um, you can sort by file name, date, uh, all any of these things. So like if I'm looking at a big pile of photos over the course of a month, I usually do time, but either way works for me, works for whatever works for you. Um, that's kind of the file management aspects of Darktable in a nutshell. Um, I may do another video kind of giving an overall view. If you're interested of like my photo hierarchy and structure, I just wanted to give like a, a brief overview of how to get started from a bare clean install. Um, again, uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna hop into the dark table in the next video, or the dark room inside of dark table in the next video and uh, see if we can't uh, do some edits on some of these photos. But if you are interested in seeing kind of my general hierarchy, let me know in the comments. Um, again, thanks for watching and uh, we will see you in the next one.